very busy day for the Supreme Court. In another decision now, the court has upheld a federal law that bans people convicted of domestic violence from owning guns. Justice reporter Paula Reed is in Washington uh, to parse this uh, and another momentous decision for us. But first, uh, Paula, again, this decision uh, that up upholds a, a broad, the broad reach of this federal law. Uh, uh, what do you make of this decision? Josh, this was actually surprising because they kept this one of these you know big decisions for the last day. We thought maybe they would overturn the law that says even if you were convicted of only a misdemeanor domestic violence uh, charge, that you can lose your Second Amendment right. In this case, there was a man in Maine who got in trouble for shooting a bald eagle, and it, and it was discovered that he had a previous domestic violence misdemeanor charge. So he was also charged with illegally having a firearm. Under federal law, if you are convicted of a felony, or domestic violence, you are not allowed to possess a firearm. And he and his lawyers argued that that bar was too low. If you only had a misdemeanor, that that should not take away your constitutional right to own firearms. But here, the Supreme Court upheld it. They said even though it is just a misdemeanor, that Congress has a, a reason for doing so and has found, found a way to restrict firearms in a limited way here. So it was actually a surprise. We thought because they saved this for the last day, that perhaps they would find that a misdemeanor was too low a bar to take away a constitutional right. I want to get uh, to the uh, big uh, decision regarding the uh, Texas abortion law in just a moment, but very quickly as well. We also expect to see uh, a decision made in former Virginia Governor's uh, Bob McDonald's corruption uh, conviction uh, case. Uh, what is the broader impact of what we might hear? Josh, this case could be huge, and the fact that they are leaving it to the very last decision of the term underscores its significance. In this case, I covered this trial. Former Virginia Governor Bob McDonnell was convicted of public corruption for taking approximately $170,000 in loans and gifts from a businessman named Johnny Williams. Now, the jury convicted him and his wife of corruption because they took these gifts from Rolex watches and vacations and even helped pay for their daughter's wedding reception in exchange for the governor helping to get his drug in certain university trials in Virginia and also even throwing a launch party at the governor's mansion. But McDonald's lawyers argue that the law is too vague, that it doesn't differentiate between quid pro quo and business as usual in politics. And the Department of Justice and federal prosecutors are really sweating this decision, Josh. They are worried that if Governor McDonald's uh, conviction is overturned, that it will really undermine their ability to actually go after corruption. So this is a decision with enormous consequences for U.S. politics. And I know, of course, you're keeping an eye on it for us, uh, Paula Reed, and we will be back with you when that decision is handed down. We